Hey there everyone, Clifton here with Clifton Creative Academy and in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about gravity forms and conditional logic. Now, if you're not familiar with gravity forms, gravity forms is a forms plugin that is completely dedicated to creating any kind of form that you want for you to install in your WordPress powered websites. A lot of people love gravity forms because it pretty much has everything that you need to have a robust form system. So you can create conditional forms with it. You can create donation forms. You can create simple contact forms. You can set up your notifications and, and many more things that you can also do with it. Uh, Gravity Forms is a $59 investment. It is a premium plugin, and I'm a big believer that if you're gonna be using forms on your website or client websites, you definitely wanna want a plugin that is dedicated to creating uh, forms. So the other thing that I like is that uh, Gravity Forms also has pricing for people that want to do a little bit more. So if you wanna extend your capabilities with Gravity Forms, then you can get the pro license or the elite license. And the elite license is the one that I have. And that's because it allows me to have the basic add-ons, pro add-ons and elite add-ons. And the difference is being that with basic add-ons, you get to do all your email marketing um, integrations. With pro add-ons, you get a little bit more integrations in terms of uh, being able to integrate with CRMs, uh, FreshBooks and PayPal. And then once you get to the elite add-ons, that's where a lot of the magic is happening. So you can do things like post creation from the front end, coupons, uh, Stripe integration, and you can even have people sign your forms digitally online. You can even use Gravity Forms to control your login. So if you wanna collect more information from people that are registering on your website, or if you have a membership site, Gravity Forms is a great option to be able to control the um, login and registration process. But for this tutorial, we're really gonna be looking at conditional logic. And the good thing about Gravity Forms pricing is that even at the basic license, which only allows you to use this on one site, whereas the others allow it uh, on three or unlimited sites, uh, but they all allow you to have conditional logic so you can have a little bit more depth to your forms. So go ahead and pick up the the uh, best license that is that works for you. Join me in the tutorial so that we can build out a form and I can show you some conditional logic. So what we're going to do here is after you've picked up your Gravity Forms uh, plugin, you're gonna get a uh, back end like this on Gravity Forms. Go ahead and download the plugin and upload it to your WordPress install. And the way you do that is you go to plugins, go to add new and click on upload plugin and then select the plugin from your computer and upload it. Now I've already done all that so I'm ready to start creating my forms. So you, we're gonna go to forms and we're gonna say we wanna create a new form and we're gonna call this a donation form and create form, okay? On the left-hand side is where all your form fields will show up. So here is where you can drag and drop fields if you want. Uh, you can also click and add fields, which is also pretty nice, right? So I can come here and just say, I want a name, I want an email, phone, um, address, and it'll set it all up for me in the order in which I've clicked it. And then you can also drag and drop these wherever you want them to be, right? So I can move these around. You can also access each field, which will give you access to more settings and more configurations for the field. For instance, I want these fields all to be required, right? So I'm gonna come here to my email. I say, I want that required. You can also affect the appearance of the field, right? So from here I can say, oh, maybe I wanna put a placeholder. Enter your email, okay? And now I have a placeholder for my email field, but we're not, we're not gonna do that right now. I think the label is just enough. And then under the advanced is where the conditional logic will occur. So when you select this, you can choose where to show or hide a field based on input that's made in the other fields, which is pretty cool. But we'll do that uh, accordingly once we start setting up our donation form here, right? So now we've got some pertinent information. We've got name, email, phone number, and address. I'm gonna go ahead and make these required. Okay, and another thing that's really cool is you notice how these, this phone number field is only going about halfway across the page. What if I want this to be full width? So you just simply go to appearance and under field size, just select large, and it will stretch across the entire form, okay? All right, you can also do that here for the email field to make it more uniform. Go to appearance, and we want this to be large. Okay, so in our address fields here, I also wanna configure this. Um, you can turn fields off and on, right? So we definitely want a street address. 
um, in the city. And you can even select an address type, which will do some configurations for you. So these are some presets. So I want the United States version because that's where I'm where I reside. And I don't want the second line address here. And I'm going to make this required. Okay, so now that looks a little bit more compact. Great. So now we have the personal information section of our donation form. And what I like to do is I like to separate out my forms by section. So I'm going to come here to standard fields and I'm going to grab a section module. I'm going to drag that right above here and we're going to call this here. We're going to say your information. So this is the information of our, oh, actually, let's make this more. Let's call this donor information. Okay. All right. Now you see this right here? This allows me to duplicate this, this uh, field. So I can duplicate this and then I can drag it all the way down to the bottom for the next section that I want. And what this does is just creates headings for each section of your form. So here we have donor information and now we have donation. This is our donation section. Okay. So here we're going to under here is where we're going to put all our donation activity, right? So the first thing that happens in a donation is you want to set up, we want to set up some amounts that people can donate. And to do that, we need a pricing field. So if you come here to pricing fields, you'll see we have product option, total shipping and quantity. We want the product field, right? And because we're doing donations and not selling products, we're going to call this donation amounts. Okay, now this is set up for a single product or a single donation. And here we can predetermine what people can donate, right? But I want people to have options uh, for their donation. And I'm also going to disable the quantity field because we don't need that. That's more for e-commerce. So here under the field type, we're going to click on this drop down and we will select that we want the radio buttons. Okay. Great. So now we can select our donation amounts. So here is the label for the donation and this is the price of the donation. So this is the actual donation amount that we're going to be using. So right here, we're going to do donation amounts. We'll start at $25. So this will be called the $25 donation. Right. And here is the actual value, so $25. Then we'll go up in $25 increments. So let's so say $50 donation for a value of $50. Let's spell this correctly. And then here we'll have a $100 donation. And we'll say $100 there. Okay. We'll make this required so they have to pick a donation. Now, what if they don't want to donate 25 or 50 or 100? They want to donate more um, or less. Okay, so if they want to donate more or less, we can just add an extra field and we'll call this custom donation. And we'll leave this at zero and you'll see why in a minute here. Okay, so custom donation, $100 donation, $50 and $25 donation. So now they have some donation options. Okay. Now, because I have this donation, this custom donation, I'm going to add one more donation field or product field. So we're going to go ahead and grab another product field here. And on this one, this is where we're going to implement our conditional logic. Okay. I'm going to remove the quantity option. We're going to change this label to say, give custom donation. Okay. And here where we have the field type, you notice we have drop down, radio buttons, user defined price, hidden and calculation. We're going to select user defined price. And what this does is it creates a field where they can put in any amount that they want. Okay. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to change this to give a custom donation. And I'd like to leave uh, some more instructions. So example, dollar sign, $30. So just an example to show them how to input in this field. Okay, we'll make this required. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, excuse me, I'm going to go to the advanced 
section of this custom of this uh, custom donation field here. I'm going to go to the advanced, and I'm going to tell it that enable this custom logic and only show this field if the donation amounts is custom donation. So what's going to happen is when somebody selects custom donation then it's this field will show okay and at this point what i want to do since i've created so many fields already is i'm going to go ahead and click on update i like to save as i go that way i don't lose any of my work in case something happens so now we've taken care of our donation amounts we've taken care of the uh, custom donation uh, aspect where we have some conditional logic happening now right so the next thing that i want to add here is well what are you donating what are you donating to so we're going to create a couple of causes here so i'm going to add a checkbox and you may be wondering why am I using checkboxes for this rather than a radio button or a drop down well with the radio button you only get a choice of one option with the checkbox you can select multiple options and because this is a donation form we want them to be able to spread out their donation wherever they want so what are we donating to well let's just quick pick a few uh, things so say this donation supports dot 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 <laughs> that's the label and we'll say okay this donation is going to support and we'll just pick some generic causes hunger let's say education right and children children okay so this is what the donation supports and because they can select as many of these options as they want to select one or all three we could say this donation supports and we'll put a little description right here in the label that says select one or all. Select one or all. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to make this required because we want to know where the donation is going to go. And what the only thing that's left now is for them to pay right for, for them to for us to collect the money for the donation but why don't we go ahead and preview our form right now to see what's happening so far so I'm gonna go here and click on preview and we'll take a look at how this looks so so far we have name first and last name email phone address and donation okay so let's test our conditional logic now remember what I said in the beginning conditional logic is basically uh, giving people an option based on a previous input. So for instance, if I select $25, nothing's happening here, okay? It just knows that I'm gonna select $25. $50, $100. But if I select custom donation, it now asks me to give a custom donation amount, right? So now it's asking for uh, an entry. And here I can then put, you know, $50 or something like that. And that's conditional logic. Now, what if I turn this off? What if I select $25 again? Then it goes away, okay? So this is how you can utilize conditional logic. And you can use, utilize conditional logic based on any field, All right? I hope that makes sense. So now that we've done that, let's add a few, a few more fields and then we'll talk about making payments, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna add here, so let's say a new section. I just like to divvy these up so that it makes sense. And we're going to call this section the payment section. The payment. All right. So in the payment section, I'm going to add a couple of fields. So I'm going to go to pricing field, and we're going to add the total. All right. So now what happens is when people make a selection, the total will be reflected um, here for them. So let's go ahead and update this and let's preview it all right so here we are now if i select 25 dollars, i can see there's a 25 dollar total if i select a hundred dollars there's a hundred dollar total and if i do a custom donation let's say i did uh two thousand dollars okay and i move out of that there's a two thousand dollar total so our our conditional logic is working very well okay so let's close out of this now you're probably wondering okay how are people gonna make this payment right there well the great thing about gravity forms is that gravity forms integrates wonderfully with uh, paypal and stripe paypal you can pay through paypal or stripe you can also use if you're going to be collecting uh, credit cards okay and if you go to the pricing fields you'll notice here that we don't have 
um, we don't have any uh, credit card form fields or anything like that. So how do we actually make it so that people can actually pay? Well, this is where you will need to either have the, so if we, if we remember, if we go back, you will need to have the pro license because in the pro license is where you have pro add-ons. And in that, in that pro add-on section is where you now start getting into things like PayPal and Stripe and so on, right? So PayPal and Stripe uh, are in the pro version here. So if I go to the pro and look at these options, here's PayPal standard right there, okay? If you go to the elite, that's where you start getting into credit card collection, right? So via Stripe. So uh, let's take a look at, uh, but because this tutorial is just for the purpose, purpose of showing you the conditional statements, we don't need to go into the payments uh, capability. But if you wanted to add those payments, you would just simply go to add-ons. Let me just show you how to do that real quick. So if you just had the pro license or the elite license, you can go to add-ons and under the add-ons are all the add-ons that are available to you, okay? All the add-ons that are available to you. Right here, we can see if I scroll down, there are typically about three different PayPal options. There is e-commerce, there's the pro add-on, and then there's just a simple PayPal add-on. This is really the only one that you really need um, here, okay? If you have Stripe, if you have the Elite, you can actually install Stripe. And why don't I show you what this looks like? So let's say I'm gonna look at PayPal, and I'm gonna go ahead and install this add-on. Now remember, you need to have the pro version to do this. I'm gonna click on activate plugin. All right, so now my PayPal add-on is added and I'm gonna say settings. And right here is where you'll set up your settings for PayPal. So one of the things that you need to do is you need to have your, uh, your IPN so you can get notifications and you do that in your PayPal account and just follow these instructions right here. Okay, so if I clicked, hey, I'm confirming that I've configured my PayPal IPN, I'm gonna click on update settings, okay? Then let's also uh, come to our, back to our form, so I'm gonna go to form. And when you go under the settings of the form, you'll notice that now you have a PayPal link for this specific form. So if I click on this, now I get to create a feed. And this is what's gonna tell the form that, hey, when people fill out that form, please send them the PayPal to make a payment, right? So we're gonna go here and we're gonna create a feed. I'm gonna call this PayPal feed donation. I'm gonna put in a PayPal address. So for now, I'll just put in any address. Okay, we want this to be a uh, production. You can also make it a test if you like, but we're gonna make this a production. So by saying production, it's live. And then the transaction type is gonna be, we can say donations, okay? It's gonna look at the form total, and then here you select all your billing information. I just want the first name, last name, email, address is already configured for me. And then here's some additional things you can add on. We're just gonna say we don't want them to do a shipping address because we're not shipping them anything, and we don't want them to have a note with the payments. And you can even enable some conditional logic here, right? So you can say, hey, process this feed, basically, process this uh, payment if the person's email is whatever the value you want, you want is, or if the donation amount is a certain amount, right? Um, or if the donation supports something. So this is a more conditional logic that you can uh, enable. We're gonna not do that right now though. We're gonna go ahead and update the settings. Okay, great, now this is all set up. Now if I go back to my form, Okay, if I go back to the form, and if you look here in pricing fields, you'll notice that this didn't change very much. This didn't happen, but this form already knows the process through PayPal. So why don't we test it out? So let's go to preview, and we'll just put in some dummy information here, okay? We'll select a donation of $100. We'll support world hunger, education, and children. And if I click submit, I want you to see what happens. It takes me to PayPal and it says, hey, donate with PayPal or donate with a debit or a credit card. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so the final step in our process here is basically to embed our form in the 
uh, front side of our website, right? So people can find it via a page because we've, we've just completed the process of building it out, connecting it to PayPal, and now it's ready. So to add it to a page, just go to page, add new, and we'll call this page the donation page. So donation, uh, click on the plus sign in, Gut in Gutenberg and just do a search for gravity. There's the form block. I'm gonna select the donation form that we created. I'm gonna hide the form title and hide the description. I'm also gonna select that I want Ajax so that this process is on the page without a refresh. Click on publish. And when you view your page, your form should be nicely embedded and ready to collect donations. And that will conclude our tutorial for today on how to use conditional logic. And again, if you wanna see the conditional logic in action, if we click on the custom donation, you can see that the field appears. If we select anything else, the field disappears. And as you can imagine, there are lots of use cases for conditional logic in your forms. All right, that concludes it for us. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be reminded the next time or notified the next time that we have another video. Also, if you have any questions about Gravity Forms or creating forms in general, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. I will respond. And if there's anything you'd like to learn on the channel, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. And maybe I'll create that tutorial for you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.